Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. Iran is vowing revenge after the drone strike that killed Major General Qassem Soleimani at the Baghdad International Airport. President Donald Trump told the nation Soleimani was planning imminent attacks against Americans as tensions with Tehran reached a new high. Natalie Brand has the very latest from the Capitol. We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. President Trump says he ordered the strike that killed a top Iranian general to thwart attacks on Americans. Soleimani was plotting imminent and sinister attacks on American diplomats and military personnel, but we caught him in the act and terminated him. A senior administration official tells CBS News the cabinet was in full agreement on the drone strike that killed Qassem Soleimani at the Baghdad International Airport. He was actively plotting in the region to take actions, a big action as he described it, that would have put dozens if not hundreds of American lives at risk. The order came following growing tensions leading up to a rocket attack last Friday that killed an American contractor on an Iraqi base and in the wake of this week's violent protests at the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. Iran's supreme leader met with Soleimani's family and vowed forceful revenge for his death. If Americans anywhere are threatened, I am ready and prepared to take whatever action is necessary. Lawmakers are divided over the strike with a number of Republicans praising the decision and many Democrats worried about escalating an already volatile situation. There was a threat. The time and place is a question that I still need to get answered. I recommend that all senators wait to review the facts. The U.S. is sending an additional 3,000 troops to the Middle East and local law enforcement agencies across the country have been advised to remain vigilant. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The acting secretary of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security says at this time there is no specific credible threat against the nation. A Fargo woman needs help finding a hit-and-run driver. The woman was hit on the way to work at an intersection today. After the crash, she says the driver took off on foot. It happened at mid-morning on 13th Avenue South and 48th Street near Walmart. The man drove a blue Chevrolet Malibu with no license plates and an unregistered car. He's described as an older teenager, a light-skinned African male, standing about 5 feet 10 inches tall and weighing less than 200 pounds. If you have any information, contact local law enforcement. Authorities are warning you tonight about a series of break-ins that have plagued residents in the southeastern part of the valley. Thousands of dollars in items have been stolen from buildings in Richland County. Valley News Team's Alexandra Kay explains why these kinds of crimes can happen where you live and how you can protect your valuables. It's always been a really kind of quiet, you know, small community where everybody knows everyone. Adam Bell grew up in Winemere in Richland County and describes the community as perfect. I love it here. My family still lives here, so I come back quite often. <laughs> but his perfect community is dealing with trouble after multiple break-ins. It's not really common at all that you see here in this town. Thieves have targeted a grain elevator, a business, and several homes, both in and out of town. I mean, I suppose they're kind of easier targets. With, you know, they're kind of quiet at night. It's weird that they're you know, kind of going at the, the businesses. Authorities describe these as crimes of opportunity, explaining how one took place during our recent New Year's blizzard. If a thief walks through snow this deep, at night or in a blizzard, we know they're desperate. But what you need to know is that there are steps you can take today to keep yourself and your belongings safe. Start with making sure that your car is locked every time. And never leave it in an unsafe place because that may make it the next target. If you have pricey tools, mark them, etch your name into them, or even spray paint them an obvious color. In order to keep your home safe, install security systems, or simply tell your friends or family when you are away so they can check on the house. In Richland County, Alexandra Kay, Valley News Live. To date, authorities in Richland County have reported that they've arrested one person in connection with two home burglaries in the Kindred and Barney areas. And a Cooperstown man was taken into custody after he was caught with stolen property. A Roseau County man has been formally charged in the shooting death of a Badger, Minnesota woman. 
56-year-old Angelo Borison faces several charges, including second-degree murder with intent in the death of Angela Wynn. On New Year's Day, Borison told investigators that Wynn came to his house to help him get gas for his car. Borison said that Wynn was yelling at him to hurry up. He says he grabbed a loaded shotgun, went outside, and pointed the gun at her because he wanted her to leave. He admitted that he fired into the driver's side window of the car, hitting Wynn, and then walked into the house to call 911. Wynn died from multiple gunshot wounds. Nearly a week after a fire destroyed a storage hangar on the Minot Air Force Base, that structure is still smoldering. Forty first responders were on scene in less than a minute after receiving the original call. As the investigation into the cause continues, the department is on standby to make sure flare-ups don't cause another fire. We still have to go out there and provide standby coverage for the fire even once it's out just to make sure we don't have any flare-ups. It took us roughly about 15 plus hours of fighting fire and then we were on standby. We were still going out there yesterday providing standby coverage. The fire destroyed snow removal equipment so the Minot Air Force Base will borrow equipment from other bases until they get replacements. A South Fargo man and a snow removal worker nearly came to blows the other day. A video we obtained through our whistleblower hotline shows the two people arguing over where snow needed to go. The one man was upset that a snow removal company threw snow from his neighbor's property onto his. The homeowner takes a photo of the company's pickup truck with its phone number, and that's when the employee gets in the man's face. No word on how it all turned out, but wintertime does tend to get under people's skin. A psychologist says it's good for people to stay physically and mentally engaged during the winter and not just sit at home watching Netflix. New numbers from North Dakota's health department are out regarding this year's flu season. The very young and very old are most susceptible to the flu. Only 40% of kids ages 6 months to 4 years have been vaccinated. It takes two weeks for the vaccine to kick in, and it provides six months' worth of protection. So if you get the shot now, you may still avoid getting sick. If you do receive the influenza vaccine and you do still um, get the flu, um, your symptoms may be um, less severe and your, the duration of your illness may be shorter. Last year, there were 8,000 reported cases of flu in North Dakota. Valley News Live 10 at 10 continues with no wait weather. Ooh, it's really cooling off here in the valley as we take a look at our current conditions heading into our weekend. We've seen temperatures plummet here the last couple of hours thanks to those clear skies and decreasing winds. It's 12 degrees in Fargo, feels like three, so a chilly one indeed. 16 out at Moorhead's Airport, holding on to those mid-teens out through much of eastern North Dakota. Till we get up into Langdon, single digits there. Cavalier, you have 16. And look at this. Clouds blanketing the Minnesota areas and it's staying a little milder as a result. Here are those clouds, not a lot of them left, but it doesn't take a lot to act as that blanket. Snow still spiraling its way through Des Moines and central Iowa. For us, it's these clear skies that are allowing temperatures to really fall. Now we're expecting a few clouds to drift in our general direction during the overnight hours, but by and large, we'll see single digits to around 10 in our uh, North Dakota counties. And in the Minnesota where the clouds linger, I think we'll rise and shine with temperatures in the mid-teens to around 20 degrees. We start out our Saturday on a very quiet note. Then as we go through the midday hours, the south winds start warming things, but nothing like we've been. We'll see a little bit of sun and those winds won't be too strong yet. We'll enjoy most of our Saturday with temperatures that will be about seasonal for this time of the year. With temperatures near 20 degrees, we may see 25 out in Lakes Country and a chance at near 30 degrees in western parts of Stutzman County. Now, as we go through the overnight hours, a warm front's going to move through. That's going to increase the clouds from the west and the wind as well as we go through the overnight hours. So we have some growing pains as that warm air punches in behind that warm front. More on that in a second. Here's how your Saturday morning plans are shaping up. Temperatures in the single digits quickly uh, rising up to the low to mid 20s for the afternoon. Winds generally light 5 to 15 miles per hour from the south at first. Late in the day, they shift direction as that warm front tries to punch its way through. Your hometown forecast, 22 Valley City, 28 tomorrow afternoon in Sisseton. A lot of mid 20s 
in Lakes Country as well. Now, Saturday night, you head to bed, and it won't be quiet because as that warm front comes through, look at these yellow arrows. That's very gusty winds, and by the time we get into the overnight hours between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m., we could have some areas with gusts approaching 50 miles per hour. That'll wake you up in the middle of the night. Plus, we have that shot of mixed precipitation. Look how fast it's moving through, though. It won't sit over any one location long enough to really cause a lot of problems. Maybe just put a coat of slippery on your roads. It's these winds up here in the Northern Valley along the Highway 2 corridor and in the Sisseton Hills where you see the orangish colors that will be ripping in the overnight hours into the morning. Temperatures go from 20s on our Saturday afternoon to by Sunday morning into the 30s. And then the rest of our Sunday, it'll be windy, kind of blustery, and temperatures falling as we head into our work week. Carla shared this Gwinner photo of clouds and a whole lot of snow banks as well. Thanks so much for uploading your photo. Now, remember, the 33 on Sunday comes with a whole bunch of wind and that pre-dawn shot of moisture then going into the work week temperatures will be on their way down how low will we go mike morgan tell me tell me it looks like 12 below zero as we start wednesday morning a nice rebound as we head into thursday with some snow after that a uh, a more significant arctic blast heads in to town for the weekend great can't wait <laughs> Later on Valley News Live 10 at 10, a great story about a Bison fan who was surprised to find out he's heading to Frisco for next weekend's big game.